Good evening and welcome to NNX where we give you campus news faster than you can eat a bowl of mac and cheese. I'm Maria Heim. And I'm Lena Peterson. It's election night for multiple races in both Chicago and here in Evanston. So let's dive right in. We begin tonight with Evanston's 9th Ward where voters are deciding be between incumbent Alderman Juan Harris and challenger Kathy Hayes. Herrick Harris was appointed to the City Council last February after Cicely Fleming stepped down. While Fleming endorsed, endorsed Hayes, Herrick Harris has the backing of City Clerk Stephanie Mendoza and Mayor Daniel Biss, who said this about Herrick Harris. Well, he's proven himself to be an extraordinary member of City Council. We're lucky to have him. He's made a real difference. Things are better in Evanston today because he's there. And when you have an incumbent who's doing a great job, who's willing to continue serving, I think that's somebody you've got to support. And Logan Schigiano joins us now with more on the race. Logan, what are some of the big issues facing the candidates? Well, you know, everyone in Evanston is obviously focused on restoring the downtown, affordable housing, and obviously hot button issues nationally like climate change and abortion. But one of the big things between these two candidates is the fact that Juan Hedicatas actually works here at Northwestern, which means he has to recuse himself from votes related to Northwestern. His opponent and her supporters have attacked him for this, but he's defended himself and so has Mayor Biss. Mayor Biss telling me that it would be a little bit odd if a, a candidate never had to recuse himself from votes on city council. It really shows that he's connected to the community. So that's kind of how they're going about this. And polls close in less than an hour here in Evanston. What kind of voter turnout were we expecting for this election? Well, you know, voter can voter turnout for these types of elections is usually pretty low. In 2021, for the older person elections, it was around 18 to 35 percent, depending on the ward. The ninth ward, actually back in 2017, had a huge voter turnout of 39 percent when Cicely Fleming was elected to the city council. There's about 6,000 registered voters in the ninth ward. Hedicatus told me he would expect maybe a thousand or so maybe more voters to come out and vote so the point is lena that every vote really does make a difference in these ward elections because they're generally pretty small thanks logan be sure to tune in to nnr for more on the ninth ward race and results we turn now to some financial news for one of the candidates in evanston's second ward election councilwoman chrissy harris says she's been receiving support she returned because she never asked for it the Ryan family is the largest donor at Northwestern. Their associates and extended family began donating large sums of money to Harris's campaign late in the race. Some of these donations are an attempt to influence her city council vote for the Ryan Field expansion. It was three, six thousand back to back to back. And we were like, whoa, felt weird all of a sudden, like. Harris says she returned all of the donations, but some community members still want to know why she received them in the first place. Harris faces Patricia Gregory and Darlene Cannon in the election for second ward alderperson tonight. And in Chicago, the mayoral runoff is happening tonight with former CEO of Chicago Public Schools, Paul Vallis, facing former Cook County Commissioner Brandon Johnson in a tight battle. Vallis's campaign, endorsed by Chicago's Fraternal Order of Police, primarily centers around adding more police officers to crack down on crime, enforcing community policing, and putting law enforcement in, on public transit. Johnson's campaign, endorsed by the Chicago Teachers Union, focuses on building sustainable community schools at all levels and ensuring Chicago public school students have access to resources. The race is projected to be close as the new mayor of Chicago is decided tonight. We move now to campus news after a warning that the union representing drivers of NU shuttles was preparing for a potential strike as early as tomorrow. Northwestern saying in an email that a tentative deal has been reached and no disruptions to shuttle service are expected. The shuttle company We Drive You confirmed this in an email to NNN. This summer's Undergraduate Research Assistant Program, or URAP, was canceled last week in an announcement from NU's Office of Undergraduate Research. The office saying a surge in applications to the Summer Undergraduate Research Grant Program, or URG, is the reason behind the cancellation. The program saw 480 applicants, a 42% increase from last year. 
The Office of Undergraduate Research has a total of $1.5 million between all of its programs to give to students and historically has had a cap-free promise on accepted applicants. This led URAP, which was not yet accepting applicants, to be canceled. When you don't have a cap, you, you don't have a cap. And the way that we promoted this program and talked about it, and we're very transparent about this, is that that's how it's done. If you were looking to apply to summer URAP, you can contact the Office of Undergraduate Research for help finding another summer opportunity. Northwestern students are joining the approximately 1.9 billion Muslims worldwide in celebrating Ramadan. Observance includes fasting from sunrise to sunset and additional prayers to appreciate the month the Prophet Muhammad received the Quran. Muslim students can break their fast for free at Plex each evening, and there will be an interfaith banquet tomorrow night open to everyone. Ramadan is like one of the ways to build like the strongest community ever. Additional Ramadan events can be found on the MCSA Instagram or on YouTube by searching Northwestern Ramadan. Water fountains are in every Northwestern residential building. In some dorms, the filter light on the water fountains has been red since the beginning of the school year. While some students worry the light carries health implications, Northwestern's facilities says the filters remove all, all harmful components from the water. We do do regular testing of the water uh, at the filter stations and uh, the red light is really misleading. Facilities is working on installing new filter technology in each of the dorms fountains that will remove bacteria, metals, and chlorine. Spring has sprung and along with it, growing season. NNN Sabrina Carson takes us into the weeds of how some Evanston groups are supporting nearby gardeners. As warm weather approaches, community group Edible Evanston welcomes this budding period with their 10th annual plant and seed swap. People are, are coming to get seeds, but they're learning about seeds. A small group of gardeners, Edible Evanston shares their mission to grow and share food and educate people in the community. Ken Castman, co-leader of Edible Evanston, helps to organize events like the seed swap and other hands-on programming. Offering a food forest and community gardening plots, the group seeks to create a healthier, more resilient way to grow. If you're growing your own food, you're not relying on someone else or the grocery store to have something that you want. This event, hosted with the Robert Crown Branch Library, helps to make gardening more accessible. It seemed like momentum was growing for people to grow food at home and I thought the library could help. Kelly Fleming, library branch assistant, hosts this event through the library Huga series. Robert Crown Library also supplies a small seed library which distributes free seeds to the community. You just come and grab the seeds as you can, whatever strikes your fancy. Residents like Yvette Jordan Granberry feel supported by the financial accessibility the swap provides. Seeds can cost a fair amount of money. You look at some of these packets, they're two and three dollars a packet. A growing community in both people and plant life. Sabrina Carson, Northwestern News Network. Thanks, Sabrina. Hopefully later this quarter, the food forest can be seen in full bloom. Lena, do you happen to have any experience with gardening? Actually, it's funny that you ask. Um, my family and I at home, we have a square foot garden in our backyard, which isn't very big, but it's enough to be able to have basil, fresh tomatoes, and Ooh. just having that growing up was a really nice way to incorporate that into cooking. Ah, interesting. What very about you? similar to you, I grew up growing tomatoes with my grandfather. Wow. But yeah. That's so special. Yeah. I'm so glad that you were able to have that childhood memory. <laughs> well, that's all the time we have for tonight. Thanks so much for watching. Stay tuned for the Northwestern News Report coming up next. I'm Lena Peterson. And I'm Maria Heim. Have a great night.